<laughs> hey guys, and welcome to another Top Notch episode of Comic Book Weekly. We're your hosts, and uh, as usual, we're going to give you some reviews of some of the standout comics from our poll list this week, as well as a discussion about the educational value of comic books and whether or not they should be uh, utilized a little bit more in school curriculums. So I'm going to kick you off this week with Harley Quinn, Issue Zero, written by Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor, who are actually married. Uh, yeah. They make a little joke about it in the comic book, and we actually looked it up to I'm make gonna, sure. Why do they make Issue Zeros? They, they, that means that issue doesn't exist. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, this is not real. Uh, I made this up. <laughs> anyway, so it's written by Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor and a whole shit ton of artists. I don't know if you can see or if our lovely camera operator can zoom in a little bit, but there are actually 17 different artists on this issue. Each of them adds their own flair and vision to Harley Quinn uh, in the couple of pages that they're given uh, because the story switches up every couple pages. There's a different writing, there's a different little story each section, and there is different style of art, which uh, this actually makes it a really good uh, issue if you want to figure out what DC artists you really, really like, because most of them are here. <laughs> uh, so the whole issue revolves around a dialogue between Harley Quinn and the two writers about how the three of them would like her story to be written, how they would like their story to look, and what artists they think they should have doing it. So all these other artists make uh, cameos with their art and put their own twist, like I said, on Harley Quinn. It is really unlike anything else I've read. These guys uh, feel like it's a female version of Deadpool. It is very much a female. But because the story changes and the art changes every couple pages, I feel like it sets itself apart from that. Although her breaking the fourth wall is very Deadpool reminiscent. Mm -hmm. Apparently it's going to end after this issue because this issue doesn't exist. <laughs> um, so, it's a secret. because of its, because of the way it's written, if the series ends up being as interesting and unique as issue zero is, it will absolutely be worth the two ninety nine cover price, and I highly recommend it. Uh, so, I give this issue seven and a half kapows for the story. It does switch up a lot and evolve and go to different places. So, if you're not paying complete attention, you can be like, "Whoa, how did we get here?" But uh, in the end, it's a very cool story. It's very unique. And I've, I've really never read anything like that in, in comic books. For the art, that's a little tricky. I give it anywhere between three and ten kapows. Kapow! Kapow! <laughs> because some pages are absolutely excellent, beautiful artwork, and you're just like, wow, I really hope that's what they go with. And other pages are like, I can see why they did that, but it's not really what I want to see this comic go with. Tiny, tiny. So it's, yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's very interesting. I highly recommend it. Um, the artist I believe that's doing the actual series is going to be Chad Harden, who does the l last couple pages of the book that look uh, really, really good. So I, it should be really interesting. I hope you guys check it out. I'm gonna, it's going to be one of the few DC comics on my pull list for sure. So uh, it's, I was really pleasantly surprised. I, I had a fear that this wasn't going to be that good, and that would be excellent. Anyway, so I will pass it over to uh, the Bubble Boy. Bubbles, Bubble Boy. Shadow Sailor. Go with it. Oh, Bubble Sailor. Blaze. Bubble Blaze. It's all good. Bubble Blaze. It's all good. Whatever, boys. <laughs> well, I'm, today I'm going to bring to you Forever Evil, Rogue's Rebellion. Basically, if you've been reading um, uh, Forever Evil, this is the Rogue's story of it. Um, half this issue is kind of already in Forever Evil, so it kind of made a plan to read over again. But I, it's it's basically about the rogues aren't really agreeing with the crime syndicate now, so they're starting a rogues rebellion. What? No way! It's you, know, you know what's funny? I read the time and I thought, you know what? They're not gonna rebel. This is a joke. They're gonna no conform. Way. And they did. They did. Like it happened. They didn't conform <laughs> under pressure. But. Ba basically, no basically, as I said, they disagree with the crime syndicate, so now they're kind of, the crime syndicate's pissed, they're attacking them, they're sending people after them now, they're wanted criminals, even to criminals. But, um, I, I love the idea. I, this, this issue was about, like, a fight with Parasite, and it was kind of lame, I didn't really think it was that interesting. I, personally, I don't really like Parasite as a villain, in general, I think he's kind of ridiculous. But, 
I, I'm still going to keep on doing it, trucking on and giving it a try because I really loved the first issue, and I even loved the rogues in um, uh, the their uh, villains month, which was awesome as well. I'm going to keep going through, and I know it'll get better because the first issue was um, absolutely amazing. But for the time it is for this issue, I give it six capacity. <laughs> <laughs> and and for the art, on the other hand, it was good. Not not anything special. Again, I love the rogues. The art on them is great, especially the trickster. I think he looks just awesome in this comic. But other than that, the art is not really that impressive. The lightning looks weird. But other than that, I'm, I I give it still 6.5. Kapow! Kapow! You're gonna give them the kapow. And I'm going to pass you over here to... Uh, Julio Jones, I guess. <laughs> Julio Jones now? All right. So today I am doing the comic book A Voice in the Dark. It is written and drawn by Laramie Taylor. The title is actually the name of the protagonist's college talk show. Her name is jo Zoe Aarons. <laughs> I, was, I, I said Joy, but it's actually Zoe Aarons. And she's pretty much a college student with a Dexter complex with absolutely the most boring background that I really don't care about. The whole comic really wasn't that interesting. It, Would you say obtuse? It, no. You but, said protagonist. <laughs> So, so that go. Could you hear me? You so, him off the two. The, the whole comic book is brings in a lot of information, a lot of characters, a lot of development, and everything. And it's just too much to take in, too much text, and too much dialogue. It just gets really boring after a while. I know the writer is trying to get you to feel like what it is to be her by doing this, but I'm feeling like I'm bored. And I guess that's kind of the idea it's getting. He's trying to get across, but that doesn't please me as the reader. The only thing I really enjoyed about this comic book was the cliffhanger at the end. It's interesting, but it really took me a lot to pull through this comic. Like, I was dreading trying to finish reading. It, it just, like, it would not end. It just sounds like Wraith, which I did last week. Exactly. I wish I had. So, I'm giving the writing two capacity. Ah! Whoa! Yeah, very low. I did not okay. like it. <laughs> Ooh. I actually had to push myself to read this, and it was not fun. Most and the art great. itself, I rate three kapows. Whoa, wow. That's... Because the art was bad. It was drab. Didn't wasn't really interesting. And also there was that typical, oh, no color crime thing. It wasn't really interesting. It made it all not go together. It wasn't cohesive. So I really didn't enjoy the art, and I really want to know what was with all the hair touching. Does like, does all people with like that are mulatto get their hair touched? Is that why this was all in it all of a sudden? All I know is you used boring in that review, like I used gritty. Yeah, it's entirely true. too much. Would you would you suggest me as a new reader to that comic to pick up the second issue? Hell no! <laughs> <laughs> Should I pick up the first comic? Uh, no. So, Probably I'm going to pass you here to uh, Travis Tree here. Hey guys, this week I'm doing A plus X. It's a team up kind of comic book series that's been going on where they pit an X-Men and an Avenger together. This week it is Spider-Man and Magneto. I picked up initially because both characters are pretty cool. I personally keep collecting the Spider-Man series and think he's cool. And then Magneto is just always a cool villain who's now a good guy and likes working with the X-Men. With badass new suit. Yeah, not so much when he Muscles plans. This guy me. draws it. No, I know. It's shitty when he draws it. <laughs> so, yeah, just heads up. The art is shit for the first half. It, well, I give it a four kapow because it, it shows that, you know, when he wants to, he can put effort in. But it's like half the time he's like, it's like lunchtime. I'm going to take a break. Done. Yes. Done. That, that panel's done. And you're like, what the hell? I love the title, though. I love the, I love the Superior well, Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, the story, though, is okay. It's not great, but it's pretty good. So I'm going to give that one about, like, a 6.5 kapows. Cause ah! Ah! In general, I have really let down with the first half, the Magneto Spider-Man part. I was hoping that it would be a lot more, and that's why I bought this. But I was pleasantly surprised when I went and got the second part, which is in the back, which is Captain America and uh, Cyclops. 
So that one was really interesting, a lot more character development and showing the two people that are on both sides of the fence, not liking each other at this point, but they're still able to cooperate with each other, get a common goal done kind of thing. Which is very well written, I'm giving that like seven kapows, because it was such a great story. Um, I feel like there could have been a little more for improvement, maybe if I'd read more of the passage <laughs> I could understand. Uh, the art there though was still great, I liked it a lot more, he didn't go half-assed on it, you know. So I'm gonna give that a, uh, you know. Someone's got his back! Ah! Hit him with the left that time. <laughs> in total, in total, if you want to pick this up, you're picking up probably for Cap Cyclops, to be honest. Or if you're seeing the whole story unfold. But it's not something you're super missing if you don't pick it up. But now on to our other topic about how comic books can be used as an educational tool in classrooms. Comic books can be used as an educational tool in classrooms? Absolutely. They teach you mathematics and stuff. Honestly, I think it's, um, I think it's a great way to get kids in interested and continue to progress them in reading because uh, like a lot of the stuff in curriculums now is really dry. Yeah. You know, it's really, really dry. And yep. it's just not... It's just not fun to read. I, I mean, mm. in the last, uh, we were talking, we, we talked about this a lot earlier, and I was saying, like, in the last decade, you know, I probably have only read nine or ten novels that I actually liked, that I got all the way through and was like, oh, that's sick, and I would tell somebody to read that. The rest of them would be like, ugh. And all the other good stuff I've been reading is comic books, and I think a lot of the best writers in the world right now are comic book writers. Okay. Writing really interesting, really thought-provoking stuff, uh, really polarizing stuff, because there's a lot of comics where, you know, a couple of us feel really strongly about it on one side of the fence, and then on the other side of the fence, the other two guys are like, no, you're wrong about that, it's like this. So it one piece of develops two discussion, piece of too. Exactly. Well, but not, you know. As much. <laughs> but I just, I think it, it's, it creates discussion and interest, because... I mean, actually, uh, my uh, university class, my English 1000s class, we're actually having to read Watchmen. I've, I've already read this great comic, and they're Which making us Alan read... Moore, right? Yeah, yeah, Alan, Alan Moore. Moore. And they're making us read Watchmen. I'm like, yay! It's something they'll actually enjoy reading on the curriculum. I'm you actually... own it. Yeah, so and I already own it. Did they make the others buy it? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You have to buy it and read it and <laughs> talk about awesome. it and write a thing. I thought it was like, wow, this is awesome. I'm actually excited to do this in my class. I'm like, this is going to be wicked. And that's kind of like showing that it can motivate people as an educational tool. I'm actually excited to write about this comic. I'm... What a great motivator for uh, individuals as such as myself and ourselves. Oh, yeah. mm. uh, I think it would be, like, it's pretty good, but, like, even when I did, like, French, I had, like, what, I can't remember what that one is, like, Speed Racer or something like that? With him in the car and all yeah, that, racing yeah, that. Racer. Yeah, I had Speed Racer and French, and I only watched it to watch the car races. That was it. Just, like, Flipping yeah. through the page to see who won, that was about it. I just, <laughs> I didn't find it that interesting. I didn't Start, even watch it. Last page. Oh, that's who won. <laughs> no, it was flipped through. Watch this, the nice turn angles. Now, I, I liked it more for the art. And I think, like, not only for reading, but it shows art and it improves, like, not many kids I find are taking art classes. They're all taking drama or, like, music nowadays. No one does art. Yeah. And it's Girls something that we can't so have. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's something we can't let it die off, though, because if we already have writers, right. we can't yeah. have comic books. We did have some artists too, which is good. Everyone. Not like this guy though. Go and dedicate yourself, not have More ass. like some of the 17 artists in this one. Yeah, more like <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. I can't off the top of my head tell you which ones, but. So, uh, one thing that I'd like to mention in comic books is they're very political. Oh, very yeah. political. Oh, and this, look at Civil War. And, man. and let's face it, politics is everything to do with our education. It's totally understand. Exactly. Civil War, Avengers versus X Men, whether whether it's right to try to bring up a race that's down, right? Avengers versus X Men, dying race, yeah. yeah. Or the suffragette of the mutant race. Right? Or the idea that these people work for the capitalists in the government. Mm -hmm. Like you got Shield, who actually works for the government, and these are all cool mm -hmm. ideas or great ideas that 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 help enlighten us on the on actual education. Yeah, like for me, uh, I was in French immersion for a long, long time. And one of the ways I learned French was reading the Tintin comics by Helge. 
And uh, they, they have other ones, like SADX and OBX is another good one. Because it's, there's little blurbs and you can learn the language slowly and how it's used in context and how it's used in conversation. And I've read all of the Tintin books in French and all of them in English and they're just as good. And it's just, it was always something like, hey, you can do a book report on Tintin. Like, hell yeah, I want to do a book report on Tintin. That's awesome. <laughs> You know, like I know them inside and out in both in both languages, so it was always really really fun for me. Um, so, like from that perspective, I think it's a great, like especially if you're learning a second language, that's a, it's a great place to start uh, with with uh, a comic book. So you've got something interesting, yeah? Story yeah, I, I've, I've actually got a really funny story. I, I don't know about our viewers or uh, Travis or Jordan here. Sorry, Lois or Tree, but. <laughs> It's but the first time you've called me by my actual name in like a month and a half. It's true, but and our, not just in the videos, like in real life. In high school, we used to we used to every Friday have mm -hmm. twenty minutes where we had we were forced we Reading were coerced things, to read, yeah. and everyone was like dreaded. They're like, oh, we don't want to read. I was kind of like I was kind of like thinking to myself, I'd pull out my big graphic novel of essentials. Uh, Green Lantern, I'd be like, I'm like, these guys are suckers. They're having to do this. I feel, I felt like I was cheating the system that I was reading these comic books. While <laughs> these people had to suffer reading their books, I'm just like, oh, I'm laughing my face off. But to get get to the funny part, one of my friends, he was in my class, and uh, I, I I was reading Green Lantern, the essential Green Lantern. And my friend was sitting right beside me, and this girl comes up to me. This cute girl comes up to me, and she looks at me. She's like, uh, Green Lantern. Oh, cool. Isn't that uh, Spider-Man's bad guy? And my friend gives her the dirtiest look. And he's like, they're from two different universes, you stupid bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at him like, bullshit, bullshit. I, you were like, hi. Hello. I couldn't help it. It was, it was <laughs> hilarious. I, I, looked, I looked at him, I was just like, Holy crap! <laughs> you actually but, called her out on it. I, I know, he called her out on it the most brutal way possible. <laughs> I will never forget that experience because it was awesome. But it was also interesting because this uh, this this girl came up to me wondering, you know, what I was reading. And she was like, well, you get to read some with and pictures. That's completely no fair. Hey! And you know, instead of getting positive feedback to go on recon, she gets called out as a stupid <laughs> 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 And shun to hate people who read coffee press like yeah, it's a vindictive so asshole. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh man. She probably hates all the hipsters. You read comics? Smack! Throw beer on them, walk whoa, away. Whoa, reading comics qualifies you as a hipster? They want to try and do If it. you read indie comics, I read them before they were cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hipster. Uh, so I guess we'll end it here, guys. Um, thank you very much for joining us. One thing I'd like to add is, please check out our Facebook, our Twitter, our Tumblr, our Twerker, our Shitter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you very much. And remember to pick up your weekly comments. Yeah! yeah!